smoking his pipe with his wife. And I'm in the man house. And the man said, you see the gas station, your pastor, I will go, you go back and turn right. But I got lost there again when I left the old man house. And there's a man against a little house like this. At two o'clock in the morning, it's a little house. I said, well, I know you. Good night. He said, good night. I said, I'm lost. He said, I know that. And I was waiting for you. I said, what? He said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to Honduras. He said, well, I'm going two minutes away from where you're going to the border of Guatemala, I live. Mm -hmm. I picked him up and I took the man. Hi. Carry on. <laughs> Good are you day. the chef? Oh, yes, you are. Good day, I am. Yes, you are. Hello, my brother. Hi. How are you? It's a pleasure meeting you. Oh, it's more than a pleasure. Heard so much about you. Uh, I'm Have a seat. Thank you. Love this to. is the hot seat for you. Love to. You deserve the hot seat. <laughs> I'm used to it. I was just telling a story about Mexico. Okay. Do you know that I have been to Nepal? No, I have been to India, Pakistan, I have been to Burma, I have been to Japan, I've been to many places where you would assume people know about the cosmic reconnection, you got to go to Mexico. You would never associate Mexico with this type of understanding. A level of understanding, I mean, for, pardon me, but guess what? That's where the magic is. They, and they alone, they healed me. Mm -hmm. When I had gone to Russia, I was in England, I was in Africa, I went to Chinese medicine, nobody healed me. I go to Mexico, and this Mexican healed me in 90 days. But when I begin to look at the Mexican integrity, I begin to see something very beautiful. Mm. Something that i never seen anywhere in the world. <laughs> and I'm going to give you a taste of it. There's a man selling herbs. But he's bad feet, like I am. Bad feet. Mm -hmm. But he's drizzling. This is the place named Cuautla. Well, I'm looking at this man selling his herbs, but I don't know what these herbs are because I don't know. I don't know every herb in the world. There are trillions of them. I said, sir, what herb is that? He said, that is Tila Trumpetia. Hmm. And what's that for? He said, that is for crazy people like you. I said, but why am I crazy? He said, because your license plate says California. <laughs> <laughs> um, and th this is Paula Morello. Where are you going? I said, I'm going to Honduras. He said, that's not the question. I'm asking you, where are you going in life? Because I'm a Mexican. And I don't even know Mexico City. And you left Mexico City yesterday. I said, yes, I did. He said, that's why I said, you're crazy. I said, well, he said, that's right. You got to obey nature. I said, yes, I have to. So he said, how, I asked him, how do you know that this herb is good for crazy people? He said, because it has a lot of oxygen. I said, but how do you not have a lot of oxygen? He said, I'll show you. He took a glass of water, he took a handful of the herbs, and he put it in the water, and in two seconds, blah, 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 oxygen. Wait. The herb is good for crazy people because it gives you oxygen to the brain. Mm -hmm. What herb is that? You see that is Ceniza de Monterrey. Did, did Pablo find it? Last week? Last week. He found it. Because mm -hmm. I've been talking about this herb for 15 years to Pablo. He just mm -hmm. found it. Mm -hmm. But this Mexican in Cuautla said that Ceniza de Monterrey, meaning ashes of Monterrey, I speak Spanish. He said, Ashes of Monterrey. I said, where's that from? He said, that is for people that cannot walk because their foot has swollen. Their liver is bad. Mm -hmm. 
because I asked him, how do you know that the liver is bad? He said, the feet swells. Mm. Oh, this is going to really crack your side. This is a journey I took in 1979. I'm going to take it again. The last herb now. That's when you're going to trick me again. I said, what herb is that? That's Damiana. Oh, I said, that's for women. He said, yes. They call it Yerba del Venado, the, the herb of the dead. I said, but I know that herb. He said, yeah. I said, may I have a kilo? He said, no. I said, why? Because of your license plate. <laughs> and what did my license plate have to do with this herb? He said, your license plate tells me you come from California. And the best Damiana come from California. If I sell you this, I'm not being truthful. And the man is bare feet. He could have made money off of me. But his level of integrity would not allow him to sell me that herb. This is what I always find in Mexico. Mexico, Mexico have a, sens a sensual, a sensation that when I go across the border, I feel it. Maybe. You've been to Mexico? I've been to Mexico. Oh my God, it's beautiful. I can't hear you too well. Would you say that the culture in Mexico, that in general, they have a different value system? The Toltecs? Yes. Let me tell you something. This is where the Peruvian got to me. Because the Peruvian came to me in, in Cusco. He said, Hey, black man, come here. <laughs> so I said, I wonder what I'm going to hear now from this dude. He said, Do you know what you represent? I said, Man, I may represent many things that I don't know about. He said, well, you're a member of the organic family. The organic family? I said, what is that? You don't know? I said, no. Are you black and you don't know this? I said, yes, I don't know. He said, well, we didn't have any toilets because we didn't need it. Because all we ate was after I food. Or even our fecal matter was clean, like the elephant. You put it back in the soil, it's biodegrade. But when you have a toilet, you're going to pollute the planet. Mm -hmm. I said, oh my God, the organic family. Then, are you aware of Ubuntu? The, the, the blueprint for human prosperity, which started in Africa many thousands of years ago, mm -hmm. and this white man just found it? Ubuntu? Mm -hmm. He said, oh my God. The banking system came and destroyed Ubuntu. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about the Toltecs and the Olmecs, mm -hmm. or oh, you're talking about some ancient society that lived by the laws of life, it is from the Toltecs that I learned the usage of the Teosinte. The Teosinte is a plan that you're going to experience in Honduras mm -hmm. next week. Yeah. <laughs> It's a plant that they used to make tamales instead of corn. Mm -hmm. Corn is a hybrid. Corn is extremely dangerous. The Toltec used Teosinte. I love Mexico. Mm -hmm. like, the, like, like the pyramids of Mexico in Teotihuacan, mm -hmm. they are four times larger than the one in Egypt. Mm -hmm. But the Mexicans don't go around boasting that because they're very humble. Mm -hmm. They're very humble people. Mm -hmm. They are beautiful people. And we should really get closer to them. Me, because I speak Spanish, oh, they just jump all over me. And I love them. I love them. I love them. I get more love in Mexico. Oh, my God, these Mexican people. Her daddy, when he first came to see me, she brought him. She dragged the nigga by force, came to see me. And he started making fun of me. Because Mexicans make fun of life. They don't live life in that serious place. No, everything is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love Mexico. I'm going back. I was speaking about the Spanish culture recently and their value system mm -hmm. and how you see their families always together. That's and right. You see them proud with their wives and their children and they are not consumers on the level that we are consumers and they don't value things. They value family. That's right. That's what I told brothers. I said, look, what's that Mexican? He got the baby. Mm -hmm. 
right? He always have the baby in his arm. And then, if you take a Mexican and pay him $10 an hour, and you take a brother with the same family members, $10 an hour, that Mexican is going to do more. Because his wife is not going to stress him. She with him. They value that family unit. It's important. And it is important. It is important. But it, it shows love. It shows love. Let me tell you something. They wiped me out in February last year. When I went to my shop, there was nothing in there. My wife, my manager, my daughter, the manager's daughter, and everybody else wiped and took everything away. Wow. A business that I had now for 15 years. Pablo, the Mexican, said, what are you going to do? I said, well, I'm going to take my tail and put it between my legs and I'm going to roll over and play dead. <laughs> he said, you out of your mind? Called Jenny. That's a Mexican. Mm -hmm. Jenny came. What's wrong? I said, well, they took out everything. He, she called her mom and borrowed some money and taught me her computer. Mm -hmm. That very day, this one showed up. Mm -hmm. Your nanos, your nanos showed up. What happened? I said, I don't know. Your nanos showed up with her boyfriend. Said, in a car. I don't looking at this girl. I know she's like Ethiopian, mm -hmm. but she came to buy something. You, you came to buy, right? Mm -hmm. And it's clean. Mm -hmm. Guess what your dad will say? I want to help you. Your dad will drive from San Bernardino to LA, which is about an hour and a half for free working for me. Then came her. Wow. These two, and Jenny and Pablo, and we start the business all over again. Beautiful. Now the business is like, wow. How many people work there now? Is she number one, you see her number two, uh, Jessica number three, Brenda number four. Who is number five? Beverly. Huh? Beverly. Beverly number five. Sonia. Sonia. Mario. Mario. Valeria and Kevin, right? And what about the other Jenny? Jennifer. Huh? Jennifer. Please. Yeah. So how many of you are there now? Eleven? Or ten? Ten of us. Ten. Ten. Running. But these two started it. Mm -hmm. But when she came, when Jenny hired her, uh -huh. I said, no, I wonder why Jenny hired her. <laughs> She's so fragile. Looks so small. Wow. But when she opened her mouth and started talking, I tell her phone, I said, oh God. <laughs> I better shut the fuck up. You see, you mess me up. This one here. She came in there like she do everything from the start. <laughs> but that's that African behavior. I told her one day, you being an African is to me, girl. Mm. And she did. Mm. But she's good. She's good at it. <laughs> she's very swift. She's very fast. Mm. She's fast too, but she's shy. This one isn't. <laughs> so you have all these various mm -hmm. uh, expressions of mm -hmm. human beings. Yeah. And it's so beautiful, girl. Yeah. <laughs> I see. love you guys. Where are you from, sister? I'm from Eritrea. Uh -huh. I was thinking Eritrean, Somalian, something right. Ethiopian. And you are from? I'm from California, but my parents are Mexican. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Rainbows. Mm -hmm. I'm from Oklahoma. And you, where are you from? Oklahoma. Oklahoma? Yeah. yeah. My family is Choctaw. The first time <laughs> I came in contact with a plant that I hated. <laughs> low down plant and boy that plant come back on me one day I have this rela hate love relationship with certain plants and this was one of them because I was growing with it burdock you got a lot of burdock in Oklahoma yeah, and it stick on you right yeah, <laughs> a lot of burdock a lot of wild berries persimmon wild persimmon Oklahoma got everything yeah. I grew up with um, my grandmother also. Uh, That's me. And um, <laughs> I was living on um, her land with my grandfather where we grew everything. And so uh, growing up now, I'm 35. I, uh, You're 35? Yes, sir. Wow, um, you're much, a, much younger. Thank you. But I had an affinity for the taste. I knew what food tastes like. 
you know, when I got older and I tasted the McDonald's and all of the processed Kroger Mart food and the regular, you know, conventional things, I knew what food's supposed to taste like because my grandfather grew it and I helped him in the garden every year. So my grandmother would send us to bake pies out of the berries in our yard or the persimmon in our trees or the pears in our trees. So I understood what food's supposed to taste like. So for me, it was very, um, I felt the ancestral call when I heard your message and listened to you talk about indigenous food, aboriginal foods, talking about uh, electricity and how we're connected to the sun as a people of the earth. And I understood that these um, four elements are the simple ways in which we can maintain our health, just returning back to nature. Very, very simple. And your message Everything was simple. simple. Yeah. And that's what I, I think resonates with I want to taste your food. Ah, I want you to taste it. I brought some I, I want to taste your food, I said, girl. I want to save you coming to the kitchen <laughs> with me. And, you know, we may have made some callaloo. Um, but I brought you some, some callaloo. Callaloo? Yeah. Guess what? Mm -hmm. Michael Jackson took me to Hawaii, right? Mm. So Michael, he's famous, I'm not. I'm just another nigga there that nobody knows about. So I'm driving the car all through Maui. Uh -huh. But I love Maui, girl. Maui's pretty. I gotta go back to Maui. Maui is nice. Mm. Guess what I saw? I saw Kalalu growing thickness, like from this wall to this little wall here for miles and miles and miles and miles. Wow. And the only person in Maui that's eating the Kalalu is a Jamaican from Montego Bay. Wow. When, when so I ask him, I say, hey, how come nobody eating the Kalalu? He said, man, don't tell nobody that stuff is that good. <laughs> so I said, but what the Hawaiian eat? They eat Spam. Do you know that the U.S. government, that company Hormel Meat, they make Spam special for Hawaii. You're kidding me. And yet they got Kalalu right there. You know about Kalalu? I, I know you bad, girl. Oh, I love Kalalu. I know you are bad. Kalalu mm -hmm. is one of the most nourishing substance there is on the planet. And you want me to tell you something about Kalalu? Do you know that in the Caribbean, Kalalu seeds made a fool out of me. Emirates? Kalalu made a fool out of me right in New York. I'm going to show you. <laughs> in my very wise years, I used to grow wheatgrass. Mm. And an old lady came and said, You're dumb. <laughs> she said, Oh God. Mrs. Holliman, why did you say I'm dumb? Because you're dumb. You using that wheat grass? That's wheat. That's acid. Mm -hmm. I said, "Oh shit!" <laughs> I got rid of wheat, right? So when I'm in New York, I noticed that Kalalu growing all over the place. Mm. It grows in New York and Philadelphia and New Jersey. It grows hair. Mm -hmm. But what the Kalalu gonna show me? that it would not show you in Grenada, in Trinidad, or in Barbados, or anywhere else but United States, around November. The latter part of November. Look for it. The flowers of the Kalalu are going to produce some very small, small little seeds. They're pretty. They're red, 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 blue, 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 pink, all colors. They're beautiful. So now the wise me, I'm going to say, yeah, I stopped eating the wheat grass, so I'm going to eat Kalalu sprouts. So I got my little tray, I put the medium, then I sprinkle the seeds on it, how long it take you for wheat grass to grow? Three weeks? And, and you got a nice grass? Mm -hmm. Kalalu ain't sprung yet. One month passed, no Kalalu sprout. Mm -hmm. Two months passed, no Kalalu sprout. 
I was in my bed in Brooklyn and I laid there. The damn Carlos is sprouting. And the Carlos say, You're stupid. I'm natural. I'm electrical. I sprout in the spring. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me one second. Oh God. When the Carlos sprout, it was all over with. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> I look at the Kalaloo and what it did to me, I said, you know, you never know how much you know until you confront reality and then you know how much you don't know. <laughs> and I love it. Then another one that tricked me with not the Kalaloo, with the Blue Vervain. You know the blue vein, right? Mm -hmm. That's a pretty plan. You, you, you commented about finding blue vein and someone tricked you into thinking it was blue vein, but it was not blue vein. Is that true? That's right. The blue vein home is Florida. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Like when I saw the blue vein in Florida, I said, "Oh God, this is not true." Mm -hmm. The blue vein anywhere else in the world grows this tall, the highest in Florida is way up here. The blue vein in another country, the flowers falls off at noon, not in Florida. Hmm. So plants take on this character like everything else in life. They behave with nature. Mm -hmm. You know, they behave with nature. But when you mention Kalaloo, mm -hmm. as a chef, I know you know what you're doing. <laughs> I know you know what you're doing. Thank you. Kalaloo, the Spanish government used to kill you if they catch you eating Kalaloo. Mm. In Spanish, they call it Bledo. Mm. It's powerful. It's delicious. I love Kalaloo. When they were occupying Central America, they didn't want you eating Kalaloo because they know that that Kalaloo gives you so much energy. Mm. I have to eat your food, girl. Well, it would be an honor to some I gotta eat sense. your food. Well, <laughs> 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 these three here, Marina, mm -hmm. Yesenia, and Jordanos, they represent the Bolingo development, Beautiful. which is the African biomineral balance. Mm. But when you mentioned Kalaloo, I went straight to Hawaii. <laughs> I went straight to Hawaii. You been to Hawaii? I've never been. You got to go to Maui. I went there with Michael. I was there two months. Wow. Michael Jackson. And we were eating Kalaloo. They experienced something. Jean Jean. You know Jean Jean? Jean Jean is a mushroom that only comes from one country, Haiti. It's a little mushroom this size. Mm. And when you take wild rice and you cook Jean Jean with the wild rice, mm -hmm. oh God, you think you're eating the best thing you ever had in your life. <laughs> if you take the Jean Jean and you cook it with the white rice, mm -hmm. it would change the white rice from dextrose to dextrin. Mm -hmm. It changes the molecular structure. It's no longer acid because the mushrooms, as you know, mm -hmm. the mushroom world is the highest electrical world there is in the, in the vegetable kingdom. Mm -hmm. This is why the Russian used the mushroom to clean up Chernobyl, the nuclear waste in Chernobyl. Mm -hmm. Mushroom clean it up and the hogs are eating the mushroom and getting high. Really? Sammy, what? there's a lot of people asking about the mushrooms. They ask me every day, Aki, can we eat mushrooms? Is it electrical? It doesn't have a seed. It looks like a fungus. What is this? Can we really eat it? You see, when they talk about fungus and fungi, mm -hmm. there's a difference. Mm -hmm. The mushroom come from a world they call the mycelium network. Mm -hmm. I learned that in Mexico. The mycelium network it's a network that grows about a foot under the top of the soil mm -hmm. out there, just a foot under. It grows like a web, spider web, mm -hmm. and when the ozone level is right, they spring up. There is an ant 
in Brazil. He's a stupid ant. The ant knows the strength and the power of the mycelia. And he eat it anyway. But the mycelia are going to trick the ants. Because when he eat the mycelia, the ant going to die. But the ants find his way all the way up to the top of the tree. And his head bursts open. And the mycelia uses him to spread himself throughout the valley. Mm, wow. They recorded that. And that was strange. The mushroom world is the most electrifying world. Even outside of growing in the sun, they grow in the dark, yes? How is that? The shrooms, they grow in the dark, right? That's right. So how are they absorbing sunlight? What was the question? The shrooms, how are they absorbing sun? They don't need that. Ah. They come from a different arrangement altogether. <laughs> when I ate the mushroom the first time, was when I loved the devil. I love the devil. And the mushroom did that. You know, for you to stand up in front of an audience and say that you love the devil, you better have some nerve. <laughs> Boy, are you crazy? So I said, Mama, I said, why don't you eat these mushrooms? She was in Florida. So I gave her some. My mama locked the door. And she was in there for about 20 hours. Mm. And when she came out, guess what this woman going to tell me? Son, I said, yes, mom. Do you give this to all your patients? I said, no. She said, you should give them this <laughs> before they begin the treatment. Look at her. My mama saw stuff. My mama saw herself being born. Mm. I gave it to a white boy named Preston Barrett. I charged him $200 for the treatment. Barrett gave me $4,000. So when I ate it, I was in Chicago, and I saw the devil. <laughs> and the devil said, why you go around telling folks you love me? I said, because it told me that God made everything, okay. and that everything God made is good. <laughs> the devil said, you low down. <laughs> you tell that to the Christians that always <laughs> run away from me. I'm God's best friend. I know that. Satan. <laughs> you push people to God. Say, so why aren't you afraid of me? I said, well, God, if God is my savior, why should I be afraid of you? Uh -huh. <laughs> that happened in Chicago. In that park on, a, on, on 48th Street. Mm -hmm. Look, uh, these mushrooms, these <laughs> mushrooms are dangerous. Look at that. And Africa. Mm -hmm. Africa has some from the Congo. They're purple. Mm. When you eat them, you will see tomorrow. Mm. These mushrooms are so powerful. Look, oh, we could tell you stories. <laughs> I want to hear your side. I want to hear my well, side. I love, I love to tell you some of uh, my experiences, maybe off camera, with, with that. But um, I want to inquire about something that um, I think maybe you also have come into contact with, and that is uh, ayahuasca. If that's something you would be open to discussing. Are you familiar with the plant? You mind if I ask you a question? Sure. What sign are you? Uh, Pisces. Pisces? Yes, sir. You low down. <laughs> <laughs> what day? Um, February 23rd. The what? February the 23rd. The 24th? 3rd. 1st? 3rd. The 3rd. 23rd. 23rd? 23, yes. I have a little girl. Okay. She's three years old. Oh, God. Her mom is crazy. <laughs> her crazy. mama is out of her mind. I mean, she got to be out of her mind. Mm -hmm. I'm with Pablo in the morning, Honduras. This little girl, 23 years old, came up to me and said, Are you Dr. Savi? I said, Yep. She said, You know, I've been watching you for, years, for months. And I don't know why I want you to be the father of my baby. I say, you're crazy. How old are you? She said, I'm 23. I said, I'm 77. Oh. I said, uh, I could be your grandfather. She said, I know that. Mm. Not only you could be my grandfather. You're black, you're old, and you're ugly. 
<laughs> but I still want you to be my baby's father. So what you gonna do? I said, I don't want no baby with you. So I walk away from Pamela. Pamela insisted and insisted and insisted. And one night Pamela got pissed off and came to the village for the first time. Came in my hut and said to me, I want you to tell me what is wrong with me that you don't want to make love to me. Oh. And she break me down and we made love once. Mm. She got pregnant and she was the happiest 23 years old. Mm -hmm. And when she was pregnant, she dreamt every night with my mother. Mm. But I said, my mama been dead. Four years now, you don't know my mother. I know your mother. Mm. I said, how are you going to connect with my mother? And she died. She said, well, I know your mother. She come in my dream every night. And my baby going to look like your mother. And my baby was born the 26th of March. Mm. No, the 26th of February. Mm. <laughs> She's Pisces. <laughs> the same day with my mama. And the baby looked just like my mama. Pisces woman, Pisces, I see, <laughs> that's Pisces, you, you guys are vigilant, Taiwa, Tai was only three years old, she was given to me when she was eight months, because the poor little mother came down with postpartum depression, Pamela, mm -hmm. I have to take care of this baby, but I'm 78, with a eight months old baby in the bed. So I have to put the pillows, I sleep there, Ty was here, I put the pillows over her so she wouldn't roll off. Me and Ty were. I got a baby at eight months. And she didn't get a babysitter until she was a year and eight months. But Ty grew up drinking sea moss and hemp milk. Sea moss and hemp milk. Sea moss and hemp milk. My baby, my baby now is, Ty, where's your brain? <laughs> Ty, where's your liver? She knows every part of her body. I just three. She tell me. So she got a baby's telescope and she put it in my heart. She go like this. You sick. <laughs> Pisces, you guys have beautiful eyes. You guys are dangerous women too. My mama, my mama, because I, I hate her for that. My mama bought the 26. Erica Badu bought the 26 yes, of, of, of February too, yes, right? Yes, I just called her a couple of days, uh, maybe First yesterday. Thing about when you said Where is she day. right now? Uh, I haven't spoken to her in probably two months. And she's been mm -hmm. in Dallas, Texas in her home. But she tours so much, mm -hmm. so much. But you know, I got healing from your girl. From Erica? I'm going to talk about it tomorrow. Oh, okay. Lisa Lopez. Oh, okay. Okay. Lisa came to me for healing and wound up healing me. Mm. That's the power of you woman. We were talking about that today, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The power of the woman that the men never had, never will have, or don't even know about. Mm. But we men have a tendency to deny that, to negate that, mm -hmm. to want to suppress that, to control that, when it wasn't about that. It wasn't about that ever. Mm -hmm. This Russian that's in the village now, mm -hmm. that's from that's taking his treatment, he said, you know, man, I grew up in a house that is gypsy, and all I remember is the voice of a woman. Mm -hmm. I never heard the voice of my father. Mm -hmm. He better not open his mouth. <gasps> no, he better not. Wow. Not a gypsy. But the gypsy male enjoy life better than the average man because he knows that the woman is the boss mm. and he have no problem with it. He surrendered. That's you guys. <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> now, Chef Aki, we want your food, girl. Our time is coming. <laughs> Our time is here, actually. Oh, I'm glad to meet you. <laughs> you know, wait, let me tell you what's been happening. <laughs> Orel uh -huh. and his wife mm -hmm. and Mr. G to see me. Chef Aki's coming. Is she okay? She's coming. Oh. <laughs> so wait. Guess what they did? This one has said, 
are you going to change your clothes? I said, no. And I said, what did for? I said, I can't get that shit. Did I have to change my clothes? No, sir. But she thought so. No, sir. No, I want you just But you know what I like about it? That Orel, Mr. G, and all of all of them, and including myself, we were waiting for a very special person. And they thought that I was going to put my bow tie on <laughs> and, and look presentable no. and watch your mouth say it when she comes. Oh, no. no. I know. I, I know. I don't watch my mouth. <laughs> I I'm, I'm known for not watching my mouth. That's me. Loose cannon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I saw a flick of you that he showed me that you were, or you, you, where you fixing the soil. Oh, that is so good. What was I doing? You, you, had, you were working in the garden on your Instagram post. Oh, okay. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. I hope one day you get an opportunity to go to the village of Usha oh, in Honduras. Love to. Because we're developing organic electric agriculture. Mm -hmm. Let me go back to it a little bit that mm -hmm. you would see what we're doing. Mm -hmm. If you take a natural plant, a natural plant is electrical. It's electrical. Why? Because it has carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen as part of the structure of that plant. It has the ability. This is the soil. It sends the root all the way down in the ground. A natural plant. It takes all the natural minerals and convert it into a liquid. Mm -hmm. Only a natural plant could do that. A natural plant root convert the solid mineral mm -hmm. into a liquid. Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. Do you know that man hasn't made a laboratory to do that? Mm -hmm. Only a plant that is natural could do that. The process is called Iontrophorosis, mm -hmm. the ability to convert from a solid to a liquid. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's burdock. Mm -hmm. That's yellow dock. That's, that's like the other one, which is the, uh, the red clover. Mm -hmm. That's also the sarsasparilla. That's also the, the uh, guaco, the contrivo, the hombre grande the cancansa, the popa, the sia, the marula, all these plants are electrical. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they are native. Now, when you take a carrot plant, well, just put the carrot out of the way because we don't use that. Mm -hmm. But when we use like turnips or squashes or tomatoes, they send their root mm -hmm. about this high, an uh, inch only. And they do not have the ability to convert the solid to a liquid. Mm -hmm. And I struggled with that for years. Guess what I found out though? Hmm. That the unnatural plant has the ability to absorb water or liquid, right? Mm -hmm. They absorb liquid. Mm -hmm. Tomato plant does. Cucumber does, right? When you put the water on it, it absorbs it. I said, oh yeah? So what I would do then is get the plants mm -hmm. that are organic and electrical mm -hmm. and deionize them by boiling them mm. and pouring that electric liquid as a nourisher mm -hmm. for the tomato, the cucumber, the okras, and oh, you get a product mm. that when you eat it, you say, oh God, <laughs> I can't believe this. That has to be amazing. You have electrified a hybrid plant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the product is sweet. Mm -hmm. The okras were large because, you know, I was influenced by Louisiana. Mm -hmm. I didn't eat okras in Honduras. I ate okra in Louisiana. Mm. Interesting. Because those niggas in Louisiana, <laughs> they know how to cook stuff. They, love okra. they cook stuff to kill you, but it tastes <laughs> so good. <laughs> God, I miss my poor boy sandwich. Food. Very rich food. You know what I did? Mm. This nigga head's crazy. <laughs> when I go to New Orleans, 
I buy two pounds of oyster mushroom. Mm. And I go to the lizard field by Jaegers. I say, hey, I want you all to take these mushrooms mm -hmm. and you prepare them. That day when you prepare the other, the other oysters, mm. these are mushrooms. And make me an oyster sandwich. Except wow. it's not the animal, it's the mushroom. The mushroom. Oh, I know that was the mushroom. And I would buy my draft bear and go to City Park and sit down and pretend I'm in New Orleans in 1954 with my friends or the Jean Jean or Harry Jean Jean. Here it is. Smell them, you see. Thank you. Smell oh. them. Ooh. Yeah, girl. These, thank you, Rel. I'm oh. taking these to Honduras to cook. <laughs> Oh, Look, these, are these things, oh my goodness. these are very good. These are like nourishing. Mm -hmm. mm. You had them before, uh, right? Yeah. Jean Jean Reminds is powerful. Like if you made an oil, you grow you oil with it. Oh my, that's <laughs> very strong. They're strong. Sheesh. I was with Michael Jackson when the woman, there's a woman in Orlando, Florida, <laughs> They came in the room and she's talking English, but the English is kind of broken. Mm -hmm. But she's very light skinned, mm -hmm. looked like white. I said to her, where are you from? She said, I'm from Morocco. Oh yeah, how many languages you speak? Five? She said, yes. Because everybody in Morocco speaks five languages. Mm -hmm. Everybody. Kids, five languages, no less. Wow. I said, where are you from? She said, I'm from Haiti. I said, you know Jean Jean? She said, yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, could you cook me a part of Jean Jean? She did, and brought it two days later. Michael just need to have the part by himself. <laughs> <laughs> this stuff is so delicious. Wow. Oh God, Jean Jean is delicious. Huh. So we learn every day, right? Yes. We learn, we learn every day. But I'm glad to meet this grand chef. Oh, I'm, I'm, more, I'm more glad to meet you, um, and it's so timely because I'm just now like about to, is. indeed, um, I'm launching my first book, and I was just writing the foreword in the book, and I, I gave uh, honor to some of my um, honored ancestors who have passed and some of my living elders now who have kind of been the cornerstone for my research and my work and my passion, and I said, I have to stop and give honor to Dr. Sebi um, before I can go any further in this work because um, listening to him since 2002, I flew from Texas to Atlanta to come and see you. And since that time, I was researching hybrid food. And I said, uh, I, I can't put this book out without giving honor to him. And in the past three weeks, I've had pressure to put it out, put it out, put it out. And when I heard you were coming, I said, okay, this is why this hasn't happened yet, because I have to see my elder before I can release this book. And to let you know that uh, your work has uh, spearheaded a movement with young people all over, and that uh, indigenous cultures all over the world, Native American women like myself, my Native family, my Cree family, my Seminole family that I'm very much in contact with. I'm teaching them about indigenous and Aboriginal food and uh, as well as a lot of the Hispanic brothers and sisters and the Eritrean brothers and sisters, the young people, we are getting the message and we are, um, we're teaching the young and we're moving that message forward. So we honor you. And uh, I was sitting in a circle last night of about 30 people and I got dressed and I hurry up and came here but I spent my night in a, a prayer and in a meditation. And in my prayer, um, I was singing some of my native songs and uh, my grandmother came to me and she said, you are not going to do an interview today. You're going to have a chit chat with your elder and just to honor him and to listen. You're so humble. Thanks. But this work is woman. <laughs> you laugh it, but it's the truth. Girl, everything about me is about women. Everything. Awesome. I never had a father. Hmm. Never had a, a male voice in my ear as a child. Hmm. Had a mom and a grandmother. Then I came into the world. And then the, the people that women are married, they, they were always controlling me. 
<laughs> and the woman that gave me the name Shabby, it was a woman that said I was a healer. Mm -hmm. And when they took me to this crazy woman on Adams Street, you've you been to LA? Mm, yes. Right, Adams and, and, and La Brea, there's a woman there that used to sell all kind of stuff that belongs in the spiritual world. Mm. And she looked at me and said, why don't you do what you're supposed to be doing? I said, why don't you go to hell? <laughs> I was pissed off because I couldn't see it. But they were messing with me. Mm -hmm. And they were women. Mm. And there was one that really messed me up. I took her to Mexico. Because Mexico is my favorite place in the world. Beside Africa, Mexico is the shit. <laughs> when I go to Mexico, this woman is gonna buy a robe. I saw about the robe. Beautiful robe. And the woman that sell her the robe named Josefa. Josefa is so bad. She made one dress and it is four dress in one. Mm. You put the dress on right side up, backwards, and frontward. You put inside out, backwards, and front. And it looked like four different dresses, one dress. This Mexican woman is so creative. Mm -hmm. She told Patricia. She sold Patricia the robe. Mm -hmm. Patricia, when I get to LA, Patricia, you a healer. And you gonna wear this robe in front of me as a healer. So you're full of shit. And I threw the herb in the in the corner in in a in a in a, in a what you, trunk. Mm. 1975. Mm. 1982. A Sagittarius male, like this nigga here, <laughs> Mr. G, <laughs> says, from Honduras we have Dr. Sebi in Washington, 1982. The healer from Honduras. And when I came on stage mm. and I look at the audience, Patricia Yates, who said that I was a healer, was sitting right there. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. I want to cry. <laughs> I want to go to the floor. She looking at me like, mm. so she knew. See, your woman, your woman, has an energy that respond spontaneously in the moment without being preconceived. Mm. And you guys don't even know you have it until you have to face a situation where you have to act and then it comes out. You guys are cosmically in tune, not we. Mm. We are to a certain degree, but you guys are the one. That's why when I heard the word, when I heard the thing about the lion and the king of the jungle, yeah, he may be, but his mama taught him everything he knows. Mm. Who is she? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the elephant kingdom, the largest animal in the world, when that male gets to a certain age, they kick him out the, the pack. Because this is a woman thing here. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they kick him out, and he better leave, and he be bitching, but they kick him out anyway. <laughs> when I was growing up, there's one person, if you ever come to Honduras, you'll meet him. You know him, Marcel. Mm -hmm. He's the only one alive that I grew up with. Mm -hmm. I'm 82, he's 80, he's 81. Miss Gambo, Miss Merrin, Miss Wright, Miss Philip, that's my grandmother, Miss mm -hmm. Roulette, Miss Patterson. Miss B.B. Simmons. These are the women that control the society. So I grew up in a matriarch society. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. And it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. But the men of the day, they allow the woman that privilege, that, that particular energy or that position. The men didn't have any problems. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Miller, he was the ugliest man, they say, and he married the prettiest woman they were in the city. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mr. Miller was in care about no ugly or pretty or good looking, he didn't play that. Mm -hmm. He was a sharp man. Hmm. I love him. So I grew up in a matriarch society. So it was easy for me to see the strength of the woman. Mm -hmm. So you tell me that you were chef, 
oh, I would love for the village to have your food. Mm -hmm. I'd love to. Love That's to. right. How long are you here? Well, I'm leaving on Tuesday for Honduras with Marina. Okay, that's plenty of time. Yeah, I'm going to Honduras. We're going to the village because we'll be developing the organic electric food. Okay, okay. Yeah. I have some clients who I cook for who are on your program currently. And I have a bunch of, bunch of followers who are dying to hear from you today. And they've sent me a couple questions. Do you mind if I ask you their questions? Oh, you could ask me any question. Okay. Well, draw the chair closer. Okay. <laughs> Let me help you. Let Thank me. you. Okay. Good. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's see. So, one of the first questions that comes from a um, uh, brother named Lazan. He oh. is. His name is Lazan. Yeah. Okay, Lazan. I believe he's from Alabama, and he wants to know. Um, he is pre-diabetic. Brother's about oh six foot two hundred pounds, and he's had a life of maybe thirty six years of eating really horrible food, and he is now taking um, uh, maybe forty pills a day from elect uh, cell electric cell food company, yeah. your company, and he wants to know is there a way that he can take all that liquid and put it into his water and drink it that way because he's overwhelmed by all of the pills and all of the liquids every day. The AM, the PM, all of the pills. He's you diabetic? He's pre-diabetic. Huh? He's pre-diabetic. Pre-diabetic. Not exactly yet. Oh my but he doesn't have to do much because we had had people to come with diabetes up to 600. Four days, no more diabetic. Oh no God. more diabetes. Okay. He's pre-diabetic, meaning he could change his diet Liquid, yes, he could do what he said, okay. providing it's all natural. Okay, okay. So if he's taking, say, some of the electrical uh, elixir, the liquid compounds that you provide, he wants to know if he can, instead of taking one teaspoon of 10 different liquids, he wants to know if he can put it in his water and drink the jug of water that way. He could do that. He could do that. Yes, okay. he could do he that. He was afraid of mixing the compounds. Yes, he could do that. Okay, that was uh, his question. Second question. Um, got a sister who is also on your program and wants to know, is it better for her to do completely raw non-hybrid food diet or cook vegan foods is just as well for her? Raw foods and cooked foods. There's a little boy in Washington, D.C. His name is Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr is 10 years old when he went to the village. I designed a glass house in which I live now. I think you know the house, right, Marina? Yes, sir. Okay. I designed a glass house. The little boy went there with a little sister named Amina. Mm -hmm. She's autistic. Autistic. Mm. That little boy saw his sister from dragging her feet to walking normal and understanding everything her mama was telling her, mm. or most things. He looked at me and said, uh, I know how you build this house. I said, how? You drew three circles and you joined them together. Mm. And that's what I did. But nobody see that. But that little boy brought something out. What was the question that you asked? The, the, She's on your program. She wants to know if she should do raw or cook. Yeah. So, so the little boy said, you know, I took that compound that you gave Amina. I call it the intelligent tonic. Hmm. And his mama showed me the grades. Didn't show me the grade, but he brought grades home that was A. Mm -hmm. She lived in DC. She was there with him. What I saw was this that this little boy is seeing the benefit of all of this. Hmm. But everything that I gave them was cooked. Hmm. She went, wait just a minute now. It is said that if you eat something raw, it will be better than cook. Because when you cook it, it loses its energy. Not so. Never that. If you take something raw, like Brother Aris, mm -hmm. Brother Aris 
used the sun-dried food, mm -hmm. sun-fried food. Mm -hmm. But he got turnips, he got the uh, carrots, mm -hmm. beets. But these things are hybrid. Whether you cook them or you eat them raw, you're not going to get any benefit from them because they're hybrids. Mm -hmm. But if you take something natural, like the teosinte, which is a plant that's natural, you cook it, you get energy. If you don't cook it, you get energy. Why? Because anything that's natural has energy and you cannot kill energy. It's displaced from one state to another. Hmm. Gotcha. You, so it doesn't matter. You could take something natural, mm -hmm. a natural <coughs> root, and you could eat it raw and you get the energy. You could boil it, you get the energy. You could burn it to an ash and grind the powder <laughs> and you put it in water and you still get energy. Gotcha. As long as it is native. Geo geology call that native plants mm. because the plants like carrots and beets and turnips, they grow to the process of photosynthesis. Mm -hmm. Not a natural plant. He's photovoltaic. Mm. He's electrical. Mm -hmm. He's come on a different category altogether. So yes, if it's natural, you could eat it raw or cooked, you're going to get the same amount of energy. If it's unnatural, if you cook it or not, you're not going to get any energy. Wonderful. Okay. Next question. This question uh, comes from a sister in Ohio. She wants to know, um, she's biracial, and so is her son, who has actually um, been sent home, 13 years old, uh, basically sent home to die of uh, brain cancer. And she wants to know if uh, this electrical diet and electrical cell food is for her and her son, being that she is uh, you know, multi-ethnic, biracial. I get this question a lot about uh, DNA and how it affects, um, I guess, indigenous food or electric food affects uh, the, the biracial community. The vibration of the body. Biracial. Yeah, how, how does it affect them in general? But Hell. it's a brain problem. That's a brain problem. Now, when you talk about brain or you talk of any part of the human body, mm -hmm. you talk about minerals, right? Yes, sir. Okay. I learned this from your brother, Benjamin Banneker, mm -hmm. the man that built the White House mm -hmm. and, and many other things. Mm -hmm. If someone want to run in a race, then you treat the muscles. You talk about manito. Mm -hmm. That's a natural structure that comes from the potassium iodide world, that comes from the ocean. But if you want calcium, you go to sea moss for the bones. Mm -hmm. But this other person here, has leukemia. Uh oh, I gotta go to the blood. Mm. So I have to find the herb that has the same cellular vibration of the blood. Mm. That's iron. But now you are talking about brain. I cannot talk about iron or calcium. I gotta talk about what? Carbon and copper. Mm -hmm. That is what the brain is made of, carbon and copper. Mm -hmm. So the minute that someone talk about brain or any part of the human body, you already know what mineral to associate it with. Mm -hmm. But copper and carbon has two expressions. You could go to the mine in Oklahoma and find copper. Mm. Oh, but you go to a plant and find copper. Which one you want? the plant because it has carbon, hydrogen and oxygen and copper. Mm -hmm. The copper by itself is a protoplasmic poison. It's what you call an oxide. Mm. You see, every mineral on the planet, there is a plant that represents that mineral. Mm -hmm. Like gold, mm -hmm. there's a plant that has gold. There's a plant that has silver. There's a plant that has iron. There's a plant that has phosphorus, mm -hmm. and there's a plant that has sulfur. Mm -hmm. So we get the composition, we get the plant that has the composition of what? Mm -hmm. Carbon and copper. Mm. No, carb carbon mm -hmm. and copper, right? Mm -hmm. And you got it. 
Mm. Yes, we do. Okay. We have something for that condition. Wonderful. And how does it affect the body? It doesn't affect the body. It assimilates because it is one. They're both electrical. The human body is electrical. Mm -hmm. The plants are electrical. There is chemical Especially. affinity. Mm -hmm. That's it. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Uh, last question. Um, I was recently asked to be a part of a documentary I think you're familiar with called Urban Kryptonite. What, 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 what? Urban Kryptonite food documentary. Uh, I believe the last one had Queen Vita, Eris Latham, Dr. Ali Muhammad, a few other people. I was recently asked to be a part of this next documentary, Urban Kryptonite. Uh, and I asked, I said, uh, I saw the first one, where's Dr. Sabi? Why isn't he in Urban Kryptonite film? This is the film that is supposed to uh, enlighten uh, our community on health. And as they said, well, he declined. He what? He declined. So I wanted to ask you, did you, was what? Did, did you decline to be a part of the Urban Kryptonite film? I decline. That's the rumor. <laughs> Chef Aki's here to get down to the bottom. <laughs> you know why they, they, they would say that? Mm. I want you to please follow me. I will. In the field of science, what is the purpose of science? To find the answer to the prevailing problems, whatever, on what level, level, of expression. Yes. Okay. In the art of healing, I respect the doctors and the allopathic over the alternative doctors. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the allopathic doctor, if you are in Russia and you are a member of the American Medical Association or the Medical Association mm -hmm. and you discover something that that raises the standards and cure the disease that in which you are pursuing pursuing mm -hmm. what is the duty of all the other doctors if this one found it mm. to come up to his level yes. to share with him mm -hmm. that everybody would afford the same thing over the board that everybody would be receiving the research of science. Mm -hmm. Okay. What one doctor would give you in China, the same thing would be given to you in America, in Russia, or anywhere you go. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. But with the alternative medicine, each one, you got the Ayurvedic, you got the Yin Yang, mm -hmm. you got the microbiotic, you got the mm -hmm. paleo and Dr. Sebi came last. He proved to the world and the Supreme Court that we cure AIDS, mm -hmm. we cure sickle cell, we cure blood, we cure diabetes, we cure everything that we have that they were brought brought to us. Mm -hmm. When I did that in 1988, what was the duty of the rest of the healers? who were offering a substandard approach or method. They were supposed to come to me, right? That's right. But did they come? I don't know. No, they didn't. And they couldn't come. And I see why. And my mama told me that. She said, don't expect that. Hmm. I said, why, mom? Because they've been practicing for 20 plus or 30, 40 years, and they're going to come to you admitting that they were wrong? Hmm. Are you out of your mind? I said, oh, shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they say that I declined. The kryptonite said that. Only because I know for certain that my platform, the African Biomineral Balance, eclipsed mm -hmm. the American Medical Association, the FDA, and the judicial system. Mm -hmm. They are not offering what the, American, what the African Biomineral Balance is offering. Mm -hmm. They're not. So if they had invite me, there would be no kryptonite. They would have to bend 
to the standard that has been set. I didn't set the standards. I didn't raise the bar. Nature did that. You did that, the black woman, not me. Everything I'm doing is only an expression mm -hmm. of the black woman. And they never would understand that because those, the healers in America, 99 and 9, 10 percent are men. Mm -hmm. But the people that I learned from, they were all women except for the man that healed me. So they would say, in protection of themselves, he declined. Why would I decline if I have something to share that is so valuable? They are not sharing anything that really showed that they healed people of the disease that we have cured. Mm -hmm. We set the standards. We raised the bar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it meant then, if they, the healer, had come to Dr. Sebi, Dr. Sebi would be compelled and obligated mm -hmm. to share with them mm -hmm. the latest research, and we got it, but it didn't come. But I'm glad it didn't. <laughs> Why? Because I'm going to give it to who it belongs to. Indeed. It belongs to you, the woman. I'm glad that it didn't come, mm -hmm. but I didn't decline that. No. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. But I was okay because, A, they look at me and they criticize me. Dr. Ali said some very ugly things about me. And that was okay because he had that right. He's part of a group that I remember 50 years ago that indulges in literature. Healing is not about literature. Healing is not about science. It's about a reconnection to the vibration of life. And they have not visited that particular place because they're still offering uh, golden seal, aloe vera. They're offering soybeans. They're offering enchinacea. They're offering garlic. And these things are deadly. So when Dr. Ali said things about me that he said, well, I didn't feel bad because Dr. Ali haven't cured the disease that we have cured with the African biomineral balance. So why should you give him any energy? He's talking. We're not about talking. It's not about talking anymore. It's not about condemning. It's not about finding faults in anyone. I had to stick my neck out in their favor, but they thought that I was doing the wrong thing. Mm. When I placed the ad in the papers in New York, AIDS has been cured by the Ocean Research Institute, and we specialize in cures for diabetes, sickle cell, lupus, herpes, blindness, paralysis, impotence, cancer, and others. Mm -hmm. We meant that. When I went to the healers such as Dr. Ali mm -hmm. and Dr. Dick Gregory mm -hmm. and Dr. Kanya and, and, and Dr. Phil Valentine, mm -hmm. when I went to, when all of them knew about this, they didn't support me. They ran away. Why? Because the Attorney General, Mr. Robert Abraham said, I got the biggest mouth in New York in jail. And when I'm true with him, I'm going to put him under the jail. Mm. I heard the Attorney General said that that Wednesday. On the Thursday, I'm supposed to take nine patients to the Supreme Court, mm. proving that I cured these diseases. I took 77. Yeah. When the Attorney General heard and saw that by his spies, the Thursday afternoon, he sent his man to tell me, tell Dr. Sebi that if he stopped doing what he's doing, that I would drop all the charges. Mm. But then he's saying that after there was overwhelming proof that I did it, I wasn't going to back up. I'm not into this thing because I am a healer. Mm -hmm. I am not a healer. 
I never tell the world that I was a healer. Never have I ever said that. I always let you know I am the messenger that come with the message of healing to be delivered to the owners of it. And that is the one that you know as a nurturer. Could a male be a nurturer? No, that's a female thing. So I am the conduit, not the healer. Because if I was so much of a healer as they think, and they have ostracized me, Lisa Lopez wind up healing me. So they, the healers, were happy when I was arrested. They all left New York. And when I won, the Attorney General said, this one won, but there would never be another. Mm. Now, these healers that exist today in America, and I am not going to hold it back, it is the truth. Which one of them have healed the disease that we have healed? None of them. So why aren't they sharing that research? Because they are ashamed. They are embarrassed to know that they have been healing or try or presenting themselves as a healer for many years and they have not healed those things. But the healing that I come with, again, came from women. I'm not ashamed to say the truth. I'm not the healer. I'm something else. I want to be a musician. <laughs> <laughs> and the nigga want to be a musician. But nature said, shut up. You're going to bring this message. So now I'm delivering the message to you sisters. Right now, we got Sister Marina. We got Yesenia. And we got the great Jordanos. <laughs> and there would be some more that we're going to select to be part of this healing journey. Mm -hmm. I'm not a healer. I'm the messenger. So, Dr. Ali, poor fella, he got to keep on talking. And he will keep on talking. And I've been around for 47 years doing this. And all the people that I remember were talking, they're still talking. And they will continue to talk. I don't like to talk. I like to do things. Mm. Right now, we are on the Bolingo development, the $200 million project, mm -hmm. health centers throughout the United States, Caribbean, and in Africa. Mm. We're going to develop a cereal out of the natural banana. They call it the Chata Senisa, which has no starch. Mm -hmm. We're going to develop a coffee that has no caffeine, mm -hmm. that's good for your kidneys. Mm -hmm. We're going to develop a whole bunch of other things. Right now, we have to develop the organic electric agriculture. Mm -hmm. So you see, they who were saying that I declined, they had to protect themselves. They didn't ask me. Yeah. They are not telling the truth. Yeah. They don't, they, they're not exhibiting the level of integrity that they should. You don't do that. You don't do that. I would never say anything about anybody in America. And I have never said anything about anyone in America that would demean them. Because it isn't necessary. Mm -hmm. We've got some work to do. And it's beautiful. <laughs> but I'm glad I met you. Do you know Lauren Van Der Poel? Yes. Good friend. You know Lauren? Yes. She's another one of you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah definitely. Yeah. Beautiful. She's beautiful. Beautiful. She could cook. Oh, yeah. She made a soup one day. Oh, God, what a soup. <laughs> I want to try your food, though. Oh, I can't wait. Would you be able to go to the village one day? I would love to go. Oh, well, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you. Love because you. Maureen is going on Tuesday with me. And I promise that these sisters would, that work in the office in L.A., mm. starting June, each one would take a week off and go to the village. Each mm. one. That they would experience the village. They have to. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Oh, it's so beautiful meeting you. Oh, it's beautiful meeting you. I oh, yes. You. So when are we gonna try your food, Chef Aki? I'm thinking. I need. To, I'm. I'm. I'm thinking. I need to uh, come and make sure I feed everyone before I leave, or before you leave. Um, 
I don't know, maybe dinner on Monday. <laughs> 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 you know, I have to get prepared. You have a lot of people here. You don't have to do I it I have to now. go grocery shopping. <laughs> I just bought a little Kalaloon. But I'll, uh, you, I'll you bought some? I brought you some today. You bought some Kalaloon today? I did, yeah. I oh my you God, Kalaloon is tough. I brought you some. Hey, you know something? Mm -hmm. Orel came in here. You know, it's something about you women and us brothers. A brother that become in tune with sisters, mm -hmm. he's very careful mm -hmm. and he's very protective. <laughs> I, I, I had my dope there smoking my weed. <laughs> That's what Aurel did. <laughs> Aurel wiped it. See my shoes? The, the shoes was over there. She moved them over there so you wouldn't <laughs> see them. <laughs> I love I, this. I'm relaxed, Sabi. I know you I'm are. Very relaxed. I know you are. Oh, You're yeah. a beautiful lady. And then Mina. Thank you. Pisces? Yes. yes. Oh my God. Yes. That's my favorite <laughs> sign. That's my mama. Oh, okay. My mama was a Pisces. My little baby's a Pisces. Mm -hmm. I look just like her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a pleasure meeting you, Chef Aki. Pleasure meeting you. Now I can smoke my dope? Yeah. <laughs> Go for <laughs> it. You know, look, look, Chef, look. This man here, mm -hmm. you, you know how I met him? Through my daughter. Really? Okay. My daughter is 20 years of age. Okay. She came up to my room. She said, Dad, you have to meet Mr. G. Say, who in the hell is Mr. G? Oh, you got to meet him. I said, why do I have to meet him? You got to meet him. Hmm. This is what he did. And when I saw what Mr. G did, I said, oh, God, Mr. G came. I say, you a bad motherfucker. <laughs> That's what I told him. Didn't I? Yes, sir. <laughs> but guess what? Everybody in Honduras that know Mr. G, mm -hmm. love him. Oh, wow. They love him. They love him because he's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And we're working together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have the healing part of the Bolingo development of women. I don't want any male and that including me. I'm getting wow. out because I just came with the message. Wow. We're going to develop the housing building, the agriculture, mm -hmm. the processing of the food. They're going to handle the healing. Wow. Simple as that. Wonderful. That's it. Wow. And we're moving on, girl. i got to go to Ecuador now. Okay. There's a man came from Ecuador that interviewed me, Johnny Guzman. I speak Spanish fluently. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru. Mm -hmm. Then I have to go to Africa because the president uh, of Tanzania was with me, uh, Kekwete, mm -hmm. and he wanted me in Tanzania, and I need to go there. But I also was in Guinea, mm -hmm. where it is mysterious. Chef, this is powerful. Mm -hmm. This is powerful. There's a thermal water in Fulamori, Guinea, mm -hmm. that has minerals that were never recorded by the geologists. And when I drink the stuff, mm -hmm. I could tell you stories. Hmm. So we're going to Guinea, Africa, oh, wow. and we're going to develop one of the most beautiful health centers they ever seen. Mm -hmm. We got the thermal waters also in Honduras, mm -hmm. where people, when they drink it, oh my God. The man came from Russia. He said, could I live here? I said, no, you're not. You're going to get out of hand right now. And he cried. He said, I don't want to leave. I said, you're going to leave. Oh. I don't want to leave the village either because the village is so nice and pretty. <laughs> Marina was there. Was there. He was there. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty little village. I want to build something that represents you. Mm -hmm. It has to be clean. Mm -hmm. It has to be pretty. I like pretty things. My grandma used to tell me that. Mm -hmm. You like to make things pretty. I said, yep. <laughs> I do. Because that's me. I'm a Sag. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. I'm a Sag. And we Sag is a, they say we're romantic, we're passionate. Mischievous. And I suppose I'm all that. Mischievous. But you know something? <laughs> I'm that same little goddamn boy I remember when I was 14. The nigga ain't changed. The nigga ain't changed. The Look here, girl. I'm the same little boy I always been. Mm. How am I going to change? Captain Fred used to tell me on the ship, I was a merchant seaman. Mm. And I was an engineer on the ship. 
Mm -hmm. The captain used to get pissed off at me because he could not understand my behavior. Mm -hmm. But one day, a white boy called me a nigger. Bert. I ran, everybody ran to the captain and told the captain that Bert was a thief. Mm -hmm. I went and told the captain, Bert is not a thief. Just a cotton picking minute. I heard it said that Bert called you a nigger. I say he did a thousand times. <laughs> Why don't you call me a nigger, Captain? And see how that gonna reverberate or how it's gonna resonate with me. Mm. The captain looked at me and said, You don't care, don't you? Mm. I said, I don't care about anything. I just live. Mm. Mm. That's right, I just live. <laughs> There's nothing special about Sebi. It's nothing. What the hell is special about the nigger? <laughs> There's another nigger. <laughs> But he was given a mandate mm -hmm. to carry out, and I'm doing that now. And I'm glad that I met these women. But there's another one named Ashana that you're going to meet. Mm -hmm. She's from the St. Helena Island, mm -hmm. right here in uh, South, uh, South Carolina, right? Mm -hmm. St. Helena. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was there. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty place. Mm -hmm. South Carolina, the people live so humble there. Mm -hmm. They make baskets and stuff. Mm -hmm. You're beautiful people. Yeah, people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. but I know you all enjoy Chef, <laughs> Chef Aki. Mm -hmm. yeah, you have a, a rainbow coalition going on up in here, Sammy. <laughs> it's like a rainbow of yeah. cultures. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. It's happening. Yes. But I survived for you. I survived for you. You know why I said that? 1988, 26 years ago, 27 years ago, I won the case. Why didn't they support me then, the healers and the leaders? They weren't supposed to. Mm -hmm. It wasn't time. I was supposed to survive until now. You guys are the one taking this. The young American adults, whether black or white, whether Chinese or Caribbean or European, you all are resonating on the same level. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. The only teenager that isn't resonating on that level are Arabs. Mm -hmm. But Mexicans, or all Latin America, mm -hmm. and America, and China, and America, they all are resonating on that beautiful vibration, change. Mm -hmm. So you all are supporting it. Mm -hmm. My age, they all are dead. Mm -hmm. And though they aren't dead, they don't want to hear what I have to say because it's kind of difficult for them. Mm -hmm. And I don't blame them. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I was able to maintain a certain level of whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But I laugh every day when I wake up mm -hmm. because I'm the little boy that never been to school. Mm -hmm. I never go to kindergarten. I didn't go to grade school. I didn't go to any school. Mm -hmm. I just grew up. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Sabi, so, would you say that your diet, the way that you eat, it has had more to do with compassion or more about just simple health. Exactly what you said. Compassion. Mm. Interesting. I had a beautiful grandmother and mother. Oh, they did for me what... I never got a birthday present. Mm. And I used to wonder, I'm going to buy me a birthday present. Everybody get one. My grandma said, you out of your mind. Do you come out of your mama's pussy or she came out of you? <laughs> I said, damn. <laughs> so who should give the present to who? Mm. I didn't get the duck. Wow. But I understood the message and assimilated the message. Mm. And now here, you black America, you made me. Because when I came to America, I came off of literally a banana boat. Mm. From where? A banana country. Mm. A banana republic named Honduras. Mm. A pair of white tennis shoes. And when this girl saw me, she said, why don't you buy some shoes? Her name is Barbara. The first time I was ever kissed. <laughs> I could even name the address. 4504 oh, Frenchman my. Avenue, New Orleans, Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> girl... The boy had with a pair of tennis shoes fired out in his pocket. I've never been in America for 62 years. Mm. And look at me. 
hmm. a messenger. Mm-hmm. Look what it turned out to be. But I like it. But I didn't expect to be the candidate, though, mm-hmm. Chef Aki. I didn't. Because I didn't have what you all said are the necessary requirement, education. Yes. Well, I must have been educated the natural way. Mm-hmm. And that's what happened. Mm-hmm. No big thing. I see. And once I'm through with these sisters, they're going to see it too. Mm-hmm. They're seeing it now. You, you know it. You all know that because it's coded in your DNA. Mm-hmm. You are part of the organic family. You know it automatically. Like she's a natural cook. Mm-hmm. When I mentioned uh, Lauren Van Der Poel, mm-hmm. you know she cooked for Barack. Yes. That's why Barack knows about me. Barack knows about me just mm-hmm. as good as you guys. Because mm-hmm. when he went to L.A., mm-hmm. he sent 10 of his aides to the shop. And they bought over ten thousand dollars worth of product, mm. but Barack had to be slick. Congress would never allow voodoo medicine to come in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so hold on, Doctor. That's what they call it. Hold on, hold on. Are you telling me that Barack Obama has electric cell food? Has what? Your cell food in his? Uh, no stop. In the when Carmen is my favorite, is, is one of our clients. And him and Barack is like this. Oh, oh my goodness. And 10 of his aides came to me in LA. Uh-huh. You know Barack had it. Wow. Wow. You know he had it. That's amazing. But we, I was telling Marina, you know, of all the things that we have to offer, and I'm happy to see that the people being cured. Mm-hmm. What's the name of that? They were showing me something one day recently. The little boy in England that had the things on his face. I don't recall. Come on don't now, recall. this and then his his mom's name is Ruby. Um, she sent us an email uh, with pictures of a little boy who's been suffering from eczema, hmm. and so his eczema was pretty severe, and within possibly within a month. A month and a half, he was completely cured from the eczema. Hmm. So, like the just the rashes that were on his face and mm-hmm. um, throughout his whole body. Um, wow. He was going to be starting school pretty soon, so she took some products and mm-hmm. changed month. his diet. Wow! And he was completely healed from the eczema. Wow! Wonderful. A lot of people suffering from eczema. A lot of people suffering, especially it seems African American. I get a lot of people to the point to where they can't see out of their eyes, their, their eczema is covering their eyes. A lot of people suffering. This is a blood issue, yes. Eczema. What was the last thing? Eczema. It's a blood issue. Yes. Yeah, well, eczema is nerve and blood. Mm-hmm. Main nerve. Mm-hmm. It triggers it off. The nervous system mm-hmm. is acid. Mm. One of my best friends named Bob Watkins, he's a reverend. Mm-hmm. He used to have bad eczema problem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But many of the kids that came, children came to us with that. And it's a nerve, blood, yes. Mm-hmm. It's acid situation. Okay. There's only one disease. Mm-hmm. They've never been to. Mm-hmm. An acid condition caused by mucus. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. And the white boy that called me a nigger, mm-hmm. do you know that I love Bert? I love this lowdown. Wait, but Bert will win. That's 1963, because I remember things like I remember yesterday, okay? We're gonna ship, right? 1963. Mm-hmm. Nigger. I said, Bert, say nigger again. Nigger. I said, say it again. And he wouldn't. I said, you're not gonna say it, Bert. I'm gonna say it. Nigger. <laughs> Doesn't sound good. It gotta come from a white boy. Say it, Bert. <laughs> Bert, you're gonna say it. <laughs> Bert wouldn't say it. So what happened? When I saw Bert, that was 1963, 1989, mm-hmm. 26 years later, I go there with Annette. You all know Annette. Annette. I went to New Orleans mm-hmm. to see my friend that I used to be a merchant seaman with, because I love them. I love them now. You know, I love my friends. I love all of them. Mm-hmm. So I went to look for them. And many of them were still sailing and some left, but they retired and they were still going in to play cards. When I left the Union Hall to go to the car, 
a very dirty, dirty white boy was walking towards me, and I stepped out of his way. And when I made two steps, I heard, Bowman, this is Bert. I turned around. You are my only friend. It's been 26 years, 10 weeks, 10, 8 days. I said, oh my God, Bert. I love you, man. You are my only friend. And I know one day you're going to come and heal me. Mm. How did he know that? I wasn't a healer when I was a merchant seaman. Mm. I wound up healing that white boy. And he went back to Mississippi. Look what he did. Mm. Calling me a nigger. <laughs> and I was supposed to get angry. Like God made niggers. Cut it out. <laughs> a black folk get angry when white boys call him niggers. You call me a nigger. You must be one, you're responding. <laughs> Sammy, do you remember when the movie The Secret Life of Plants came out? The what? Secret Life of Plants. I remember that. Do you remember? Was I, that I, what do you mean? I was in L.A. Were you excited for this film? No, because it didn't come out with the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what you think about that film. I didn't think anything about it. <laughs> so you don't believe that the scientists were connecting these plants to these um, electrodes and they were talking to each other and all of this and then, you know. The, the plants are connected to life. They are electrical. But there's no such thing as the secret life of plants. Because <laughs> if it was a secret, I wouldn't know. The <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I understand. Good you soundtrack, know. though. Oh, I love knowing you. <laughs> You know, I met Erica. She's one of you, too. Oh, yeah. You, we, we lived down the street from each other for 15 years. I met Erica. I met her in LA. She came to visit me. You met her, right? No. You know, I got to meet Erica. Oh, my God. And she came there two or three times, and you were never there. I know. She, she cooked me some greens. Oh, she did? And you brought she some greens, now. Yeah, she loves greens. She loves to cook, too. Oh, yeah. I, I know I'm going to eat your greens. <laughs> This is beautiful. I'm <laughs> glad you came. I'm glad I met you. Uh, it's, a pleasure. it's a pleasure. But your person looks much better than the picture. Really? <laughs> yeah. Good. She looks smaller and more something. Maybe the picture, the picture didn't do you justice. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, I'm glad to meet Chef Aki. Well, I'll tell you. Because uh, you are it's a pleasure. my man here, Mr. G. <laughs> oh, look. She's special. I said, I know she's special. She's a black woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is Thank beautiful you. today. Where my dough? This is <laughs> <laughs> All of the revelations that were coming to me before coming here. And um, uh, one of the things that stood out to me uh, in ceremony and song was that um, Shaman said, we take time to sing for the salmon people, because there are people up north now fighting for our relatives in the oceans all over the world. The people, um, our family, our relatives in the oceans are being murdered day after day after day, and they're begging for our compassion so that they can live with their families too. And that we are not um, looking at animals and plants as our relatives. You know, we're not honoring their spirit. And so this is a song that was to honor um, the spirit of the, um, the salmon people, the, um, the, 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 the water beings. So it went like this.
That was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was beautiful. You know, I have a music that comes from the Navajo. Mm -hmm. That sound just like that. It was always connecting you mm -hmm. to the vibration of life itself. And that's what you were doing. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, this is beautiful. All my relations to yours. Oh, mm -hmm. this is beautiful. <laughs> oh, yeah. Beautiful. So when you think you'll be able to go to Honduras because... <laughs> Honduras. Okay. Yeah. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can spend... You I have no children, I have no mates. I'll go. <laughs> well, we're going on Tuesday, right, Marina? Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of people there from all over the world, from Russia, wow. from China, from Hong wow. Kong. Wow. I had this man from Hong Kong. I said, how do you know about me? See, the internet. Hey, this is Chef Aki, and you are tuned in now to my family, Dr. Sebi's Organic Family. <laughs>